Welcome to the Techno Fundamental Report for October the 24th. We've got a presidential election coming up. How important is it? Well, I'll be honest with you, I've never really noticed a very high correlation between politics and the stock market. Usually, the most important uh, factors out there are corporate earnings, and then on a macro basis would be interest rates. So we may have some volatility, you know, it's just hard to say, but just remember, you know, back in the 70s when Jimmy Carter was president, you, you could have found Walmart. Uh, you know, in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan was president, you could have found Microsoft. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Bill Clinton uh, had one of the best stock markets ever, but it was because the internet was invented. So, you know, you get my point. You know, one man is important, but not that important. So let's just kind of keep going here with this. That he who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life, Muhammad Ali. You know, Gerald Loeb talks in his book, he says, a very clear definition of the investor's objective is equally necessary. To achieve success, one must set the investment goal very high. Not only that, but the goal must be also be a spe speculative one. For only there lies safety, paradoxical as that may seem. I know this to be true. You, you just have to take, you know, reasonable, calculated risks in order to, to really get ahead. It really boils down to being in the right place at the right time. Now, one thing that's important to understand that we're dealing with here, the market has been very split. We've had, you know, with the S&P 500 is being driven primarily by seven stocks. And what happens is you, you have a strategy and it's like you're in a grocery store line. And the other line, there's another line over there, let's say that's the Bitcoin line or that's the option trading line. It's moving faster. So you say, hey, I'm going to quit my strategy and go jump to the other line. And then the other line you jump to slows down and the line you left speeds up. So be very consistent. You want to be consistent in your work. I think that's the most important thing about having an investment strategy is just don't jump around a whole lot, especially now being that we are in a power trend. <clears throat> so a power trend, just to refresh your memory, is where we use moving averages to determine the strength of the trend. So right now we are in a power trend, which means you should be fully invested. Now, the power trend will end when the 21-day crosses below the 50-day, which basically happened back here in August. But right now, we are in a power trend. So I would say you want to try to slow all, you know, all trading down. You want to, be, you want to do more of a, you know, a holding uh, and being patient attitude. So you can see here with the NASDAQ, we are in a power trend. The S&P 500, it's in a power trend. Now, I did also want to mention the value line geometric is definitely – starting to break out here. This is the first time in about two years that this group of stocks, which is a 1,700 stock universe, is, is breaking out. Now down here I have a line showing the relative strength to the S&P 500. You can see that really since the beginning of the year, this group of stocks, meaning small growth stocks or growth stocks, have been underperforming the S&P quite, quite a bit. Now it's starting to stabilize and we're starting to see on an absolute basis somewhat of a breakout. So I'm somewhat optimistic that the market is broadening out, which is a very big positive. Interest rates have kind of recently been a problem. You can see here the five years actually climbed. We're still below zero on the, on the power index. That's not power growth. It's a, a power trend. I'm saying power index. For the last 125 days, interest rates have actually declined by 14%. However, you know, we are seeing an up move, an uptick, which is pretty much causing the volatility that we've been seeing recently. Primary trend continues to be up for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So, you know, as long as the primary trend stays solid, you should view pullbacks or corrections as buying opportunities. Uh, oil uh, starting to stabilize somewhat uh, has been in a downtrend, as you can see here by the trend meter, you know, got down here into the pink. But anyway, it does look like oil is starting to stabilize a little bit after being, you know, being, you know, in a downtrend. Uh, the aggression index is showing much improvement here. We're back above the moving averages. Uh, you know, back in August we did have some some concerns. However, it does look like we're stabilizing. So the growth stocks are starting to outperform in this market. 
uh, three economic indicators we look at. You can see here with the 10-year Treasury back above that 200 days. So the, the interest rates are, are somewhat worrisome here. Uh, as we talked about oil, oil is starting to stabilize, and the financial stocks are looking looking strong and fine. New lows on the New York Stock Exchange, well under control, no big problem. Uh, we're, we're stabilized there. So that's that's good news. A uh, couple of stocks to look at. Now, look, when I show you these stocks, these are not tips. They're basically just ways for us to see technical uh, patterns and, and so forth. This is Apple of N. Uh, they are big in the uh, mobile gaming industry. You can see here had a nice base, broke out, and now, you know, pretty much stabilizing. And, and it broke out on pretty good volume. So Apple of N looks, looks interesting from a technical perspective. Intuitive Surgical, which is robotic surgery. We got a breakout here, which we would call a gap up buy signal with very heavy volume. They, they came in with very strong earnings. So that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know.